Oh, man. Yo, Wayne! Trying to film a video, bud! Wayne! Wayne! What the f***? <laughs> trying to make YouTube videos. Trying to make it big. Leave all country, country bunking asses up sitting in the barn here and watch this. You don't even know. It's supposed to be filming hours ago. It's raining outside. I'm up here jamming out. I got me some whiskey. That's right, pirates do drink whiskey. Supposed to be fishing today, man. But it's no, dude, we gotta finish this jam real quick. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for one jam? I think we can do one. Y'all ready? Oh, here we God. go. Here it goes. rendition of Falchon on um, History Channel's Forged in Fire. Uh, yeah, um, I've always played guitar and sang vocals. Um, I just do it for myself. It's kind of it's kind of fun. It's another way to express yourselves with some artwork, you know. Um, but yeah, at the end of the Falchon build, um, I was totally beat, dude. It was like the end of the four days, scrambling to get that Falchon done. I was only had a year and a half experience when I made that Falchon, and uh, dude, it really did. It kicked my ass. Um, but at the very end of it, I told the production guy, I was like, dude, you know what, let's, let's, let's sing this song. I got this idea for this Falchion song that I wrote in my head um, on the way back home. Like, whenever you go to Capito Forge and Fire, you got to fly up north, like just up under New York, and um, you got to compete. And if you get it past the first round and you're the two guys who go back to your home forge, they fly you back home. So I already knew I was making a Falchion. The way back home, had my headphones in, I was on the airplane, and I was like, you know, it was born of blood and war. It was born of blood and war. Half axe, half sword. Um, uh, the tales of old had had said it would surely lop off your head. So yeah, they cut some of the things out, but it was kind of like a spoof, kind of like a joke. That was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, we I may start writing some songs about some of the swords and stuff. You guys, you guys would like to hear that? Throw it down in the comments, and maybe we'll start making that happen. Also, we've got a band, a kick-ass band from Pensacola named October Noir. Um, awesome guys. I know them personally. Um, one of my favorite bands of all time is Typo Negative. Typo Negative for you guys that don't know, and you should know. If you don't know, you suck, but I won't. I will forgive you, and you can go look them up and listen to them. Typo Negative, Peter Steele, long live Peter Steele. Um, awesome goth rock from the 90s. Um, just awesome stuff. Well, anyways, my buddies at October Noir, dude, they're reliving it. And they're not just a, not, they're not a Typo Negative cover band. Um, these guys are just heavily, especially the lead singer, heavily influenced by them. And there's so many bands that were influenced by top typo negative. A lot of your rock bands, Ville Vallo of, of him, um, I, I, any, any kind of dark black metal fucking rock and roll 
yeah, technically. Anyways, so anyways, enough about that. We got a house band. They're gonna be rocking the fuck out. We're gonna do some cool shit over here. Um, and maybe they can make some songs about blades too. So what are we doing today? It's raining. It's nasty. We just finished up the Malice build. I still gotta finish up the scavenger for that. Um, but we live in Florida, as you guys know. Um, the fishing has been fantastic right now. We're catching the crap out of mangrove snapper. You mean um, me? Huh? You mean me? Dude, you ain't catching nothing. That's you lies. catch like one to every five. That's not on camera. So That's my buddy Brandon. He's, he's the guy behind the camera. You can't really see him there, but uh, you don't want to see him. Not yet. He goes. He's only got one leg, guys. He's, I swear. He's only, he's got a peg leg. Oh yeah. He, tap it on the floor. No, the peg leg. Tap your peg leg on the floor. Ow! It fell off. That was horrible. Yeah. So <laughs> Brandon handled that about how he handles his fishing, but it, it's okay. He does pretty good with the camera. Um. What we're going to do, this has never been done before. I've never seen this. That's why I want to do this. This is so pretty cool. Guess what we're going to do? We are going to do our own rendition of kind of catch and cook, catch and clean, catch, clean, then cook. But guess what we're going to do it with? Uh, well, well it's, it's, it's forge, catch, clean. Okay, whatever. Forge, catch, clean. Oh, yeah. We are going to forge a fillet knife to use to clean the fish that we catch. And guess what? We're going to forge it out of hooks. We're going to forge this fillet knife out of fish hooks. Um, you say, how the heck are you going to do that? Well, guess what? Fish hooks, I, and again, I, I don't know everything. I'm just, I'm just, I, got, I got a lot of common sense. That's what helped me in nursing, critical care nursing. If you guys didn't know, I was a critical care nurse, assistant manager. I ran a 26-bed ICU open heart critical care unit. 12 years experience doing that before I decided to quit shaving, live like a pirate bum, and just, you know, live my best life. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, uh, what, what the hell is this saying, dude? We're, we're, we're gonna make fish hook knife. We're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go make a knife. But we, the fish hooks, uh, yeah, common sense is what I was talking about. Having common sense. So a, a fish hook's a very small diameter um, piece of steel that's curved over, and you know if you catch a fish, it doesn't bend. So obviously it's got to be it's got to be some kind of a high carbon steel. It's not a stainless hook. It's a carbon steel hook. It must be somewhat heat treated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these fish hooks and to get them into a homogeneous billet, I'm gonna take a canister. We're gonna get one of those those cans over there. Yeah, that square stock stuff. I'm going to fill that full of different size fish hooks, and I'm gonna fill that with some powder. I got some really nice, it's like 1080 powder with a little bit of nickel additive in it. So it's still gonna get really hard, but they're saying that the composure of it's kinda of like 15 and 20, um, which is a nickel alloy carbon steel. And that's the powder we're going to mix in the canister um, with the fish hooks. So anyways, I've about done rocking out. I've had a couple shots of this. Um, I'm not by any way endorsed by these guys. Um, I mean, I could be, but this is the greatest stuff ever, guys. Stillhouse whiskey, um, coconut whiskey. If, if you were even like a little bit pirate, you know, if you don't like pirates, then you're probably a pussy. But but Ooh. if you got if you, if you get the least bit of a pirate, man, you've got to try this whiskey. Like I said, I'm not endorsed. I just know good drink really smooth don't drink it'll help you grow some thick facial hair too don't drink too much all right so let's let's get down from here let's cut this let's do this you guys ready for adventure we're going to take you along with us let's forge this magnificent oh, 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 flame knife wait, 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 glory wait a, minute, wait a minute wait a minute shouldn't you apologize for what for buying all the shit at academy because we can't find nothing now so look who bought all the hooks guys that's that's the dude right there so Maybe when you so. go in academy and you can't find nothing it was just a tidbit of hooks man Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't buy that many. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have had to buy so many if you wouldn't be losing them all. You can't even tie. It's all right. Yeah, dude, we saw your knots. We were trying to make a video <laughs> the other night of the reveal for, for um, uh, Malice, and Brandon's like, oh, Todd's really good knots on these. I was like, okay, good deal. You know, we were lighting these things on fire, and these pieces of wood are swinging around, and as soon as I light the first one, it falls on the floor. I said, oh, so this must be the kind of knots you tie when you go fishing. That's why you don't catch anything, so yeah. All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna go, we're gonna cut and pack and weld and smash, smash. Always smash. We have a smashing good time. Y'all ready for this? Ready for this? Let's go do it. All right, we got our piece of uh, mild steel pipe here. Um, let's go cut it. Uh, I, I want this to be kind of short and stubby because I do a lot of my work. You guys are going to like this because a lot of the work that I do, we're going to do with a hand hammer, setting the welds in this right here. Um, this is just the best way I know how to do it. I think you get really tight compression. Whenever you fill the can up and you just put like a, a, um, a, a rod to the end of it, you're only compressing like this. And that's why I think it's so important that you're going to press with squaring dies. But if you do it the way I'm going to show you how to do it, 
you don't need a press to make canister Damascus. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Once I set the welds all by hand, I may use the power hammer or the press just to speed this thing up. But um, I'm going I'm to give you the tools that you can do this yourself at home on your railroad track anvil or whatever you're, whatever you're doing. So let's do this. Let's take it over to my favorite tool in the shop, my super saw over here. Let's, let's saw this thing off. Let's do this. Damascus fillet knife. Why are you so close to me, dude? I'm sorry. Alright, you ready? So these are our fancy fish hooks that we got here. We got some eagle claw. Um, this could this could result in failure. This may be good. I I, I have I have no clue. I know these are carbon steel, but sometimes they put like a protective coating on the outside of them. Like maybe a stainless coating. I don't know, but since we're gonna be welding them up in here, there won't be any options. So even if it's stainless, it'll probably still weld. We should still be able to make a fillet knife out of this. What's <clears throat> Nothing. We'll, we'll get to that later. Don't be looking at my chest. Don't touch the pirates. Chest. Alright. Alright, so let's try this right here. We got some 1080 powder still with 2% pure nickel. Very fine. That's what all the women refer to me as. Very fine. Well, it's a rough life, guys. I mean, making blades full time, and then everywhere I go, women look at me just like a piece of meat. It's it's horrible. I try to make myself as ugly as possible, and they still won't leave me alone. All right, here we go. Don't be using a knife to open up any jars, unless you don't have anything else to open up a jar with, and you can use a knife. Remember, folks, this is your captain speaking. Do as I say, not as I do. I know what you're thinking, man. That dude's got what it takes to be a leader. And yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I know these, I know these things. All right, there it is. Look at that. Okay. So here we go. Probably don't want to breathe that. I need some kind of a spoon to... Can we get a spoon? Can you get me a spoon? Dude, you eat with your hands. We don't have spoons. The spoon dilemma was solved. I found a shot glass. There's not much shot stuff in it. That's cool. Dude, look at it. There's like, if you look down inside of it, you can actually see the, the deer. Can you see that? I've never noticed that before. All right, so here we go. So let's take fish hooks. I want this thing to be filled to the brim with fish hooks because even though I bought all the hooks they had on the shelf, um, these weren't cheap. Those added up all those packs. There's about five or six packs of hooks. I'm gonna kind of do a little bit, a little bit of metal, a little bit of metal powder, a little bit of hooks, a little bit of metal powder, a little bit of hooks. So no one ever uses the end of the billet for anything. It's kind of more of sacri more sacrificial. So let's just put some of this powder at the end of the billet, and that's kind of more of our, our sacrificial. And we'll do the same thing at the top. Okay, let's start throwing our hooks in there. Some hooks in. A little bit of powder. A little bit of powder right there. Some more hooks. A little bit of powder. Oops. 
Alright, it's working out pretty good because we're kind of staggering the books as we go up. Got a few books left. Especially. Oh, that was really horrible. Didn't even try to salt bay him in there, but we didn't even get one of them. <laughs> Need a bigger hole. Yeah. Ooh. I think one of the hooks fell on the floor too. Now for the secret ingredient. We want to put something in this can to burn up the oxygen so that we know we have an oxygen free can. Last but not least, we need to put something special in this can. Every time I make a can, I put something really cool and special in it. So I've been saving this for just a special occasion like this. Believe it or not, I have got a flying fish feather. Yeah. Dead serious, a feather off a of flying fish. I know you think flying fish don't have feathers. Well, I found one that did. Dude, totally, totally flying fish feather. So watch this. So we're gonna put our flying fish feathers right here, just like this. I mean, the more the better. This is this is a really fishy blade. This isn't, you know, just any ordinary knife. This is gonna be a fish hook fillet knife with a flying fish feather right here in it. I know what you think. That's just absolute madness. Well, you know. That's how I roll. All right. We got our flying fish feather right in there. Y'all see that? No joke, I want you guys to know that that's really, it's really going in there. Now let's finish covering this. Do, 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 do. Let's hold up that stuff right there. It's gonna be fantastic. Y'all ain't never seen anybody make cancer Damascus with a flying fish feather, have you? Nope, didn't think so. Seen it right here first. Another another first here at Pirate Forge. One last touch. No, you got more than just a thing. You got a little bit of wine in this can now, dude. No, oh, 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 there we go. All right. <laughs> Jolly good, mates. Jolly good. I'll be hating on my coffee cup. Hey, we got a real quick second here about this coffee. See this coffee right here? I know you're thinking I'm such a macho, super strong, good looking, epically bearded, um, rustic, you know, hero of a man. But you're probably wondering why the hell is he drinking out of this flowery cup? Well, I'm gonna tell you why I'm drinking out of this flowery cup. This flowery cup belonged to a great granddad. He lived way out in the middle of the woods of nowhere. And he was married to a full-blooded, full-blooded Indian. So I'm one eighth Indian, and I'm Russian, and all kinds of other crazy things too. But anyways, this is a really cool guy. My great granddad, he lived back in the woods, and uh, he worked um, log. They would bring logs down the Escambia River, and then they would cut them up at the sawmill. He'd take the old sawmill blades, 
and he made knives out of them. Um, but, 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 this is, uh, oh, where are, how large is knives? I got some knives from my great granddad. Hey, there's one. There's one. We found one. Did you get this? Oh, right, we totally just found. Totally just found one of these knives. Here it is. Check it out, guys. That was a knife that my great granddad made from old saw blade. It's patinaed over all the years. It was a big dude. Check out that handle. So yeah, my great granddad made that. Isn't that crazy? So yeah, so this cup right here belonged to my great granddad. And do you think he drank out of this? Hell no, he didn't drink out of this. This is where he kept his shaving razor was inside of this. I've even got his razor over there too. So I cleaned it out. There's nothing wrong about that. And now I drink my coffee out of it. I'm channeling the, the, the blood of my ancestors, guys. This is really cool stuff. Obviously, I get some of this talent from somewhere. And maybe I got some of the talent from that bloodline. So yeah, so rock on. And uh, always drink out of your great granddad who's a bladesmith's flowery coffee cup that he put his shaving razor in. Yeah, that's cool stuff. Alright, enough story time. Let's get this thing right here clamped up and let's um let's make this happen. I really am stoked about this build. This is really extremely rad man. I love to fish and it's a pretty cool makeup. Okay, so we're about to weld this up. Before I weld it up, um I like to put a little hole in the can. Um, be mindful though, wherever you put the hole, make sure it's facing up. We don't want gravity to let any of the contents of your can come out. Um, I used to never put little holes in there, but I've had several cans explode on me. If you get really good welds and it's airtight, the contents of that can sometimes build up pressure and it can explode. I usually like explosions and fire and things like that, but not my cans. No, no sorry. So let's put a little hole right here in the side. Um, I'm doing it down here a little bit because I don't want to put it at the top of the thing. But I, again, I'm going to be welding it. I don't want a bunch of crap coming out and hitting me in the face. So maybe we'll even do like right here at the side of the can. Let's see. Well, can we do this? Ooh. All right. Captain went through. I gotta check it out. See? Little pinhole, drill that. Get you a little small, small drill bit. And that's gonna prevent any kind of explosion from happening here. We're almost at temperature. One last, one last Wayne tip. Whenever you think your billet or your can is at forge welding temperatures, it's not. Wait, wait. Give it another at least five minutes or so. Um, because half the time when you think it's at temp, it's not. So yeah, so don't be a crazy person. Wait a little bit. Know that it's going to be at forge welding temperature. Anyways, let's do this. You guys pay attention. I'm gonna knock this build out of the park.
there it is. What was once, what was once a canister of, um, you know, 15 and 20 powder and, and uh, fish hooks, is now this nice billet. Letting it cool off, and um, we're gonna cut the two ends. And just because I want to take a sneak peek, we have the can on the outside. The can is is welded to our carbon steel. Um, the can was so thin and it stretched so much that the outer layer of mild steel should be really insignificant, if not already gone. All the scale falling off, that's all the mild steel, so it, it may almost be down to the carbon steel at this point anyway. So again, that's why pirates don't use stupid white out and neither should you, because I mean, dude, this looks, this looks great. So I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a killer awesome six inch fillet knife. Um, we're going to surface grind it. Um, do the heat cycles in preparation for the Aust the final austenization and the quench, and um, and yeah, so so we we are cooking we are cooking with bacon grease out here, dudes, and um, it's hot like ten o'clock at night, but we are still going strong and we're not we're not stopping. We're going to get this we're going to get this thing in the quench tonight. We're going to birth this blade so that tomorrow we can finish this thing up and go catch a fish. Oh please, can we? Yes, yes, yes. I know I will. Brandon, sure won't. <laughs> he, Brandon just keeps the trash fish entertained that way. They don't bite my line. The disrespect. Yeah.